Good morning, Eagle Nation. You're watching Point After, and I'm Elise Parker. Coming up today, we'll take a look at the homecoming football game highlights, as well as the volleyball's victory over Wakeland, with a special analysis by Jack Parker. We also have Ryan Cleary in the studio to talk about this cross-country season, and as always, our top three plays. That's the lineup for today on Monday, October 21st. The first meeting of the Science Club will be on October 22nd at 355 in room 2122. The International Thespian Society is coordinating a food drive for those in need this Thanksgiving. Look for more information and signs telling you where you can donate. Eagle Production Group's 2013 Talent Show DVDs are on sale for $20 each. Contestants may purchase one copy for $15. Orders will be taken until November 15th. Congratulations to the girls' golf team for their first place finish at the Champions Circle last Tuesday. If you would like to have the chance to win two tickets to the October 26th Paramore concert, tweet ENN Paramore tickets at Eagle Nation News by, next, by this Friday. NHS members, you will be having a mandatory meeting on Monday, November 4th in the LGI at either 7.50 a.m. or 3.50 p.m. On Tuesday, November 5th, you will be having induction ceremony practice during the advisory period in the auditorium. On Wednesday, November 6th, we will be having our fall induction ceremony. Be there by 5.30 in the cafeteria. This past Friday, our volleyball team traveled to Frisco to take on the Wakeland Wolverines, and our football team hosted the Colony for Prosperous Homecoming Game. Let's take a look at this week's highlights. The Prosper Eagle volleyball team took on Wakeland this past Friday. The Eagles won a close first game, 25-22. The Wolverines would be no match for the for Prosper as they took Game 2, 25-11. Candace Freeman led the attack with 11 kills. Meredith Bramer and Maddie Scarborough followed with 8. Meredith Bramer and Kaylee Cole also had 18 digs apiece. And Ashley Brown would have 8 digs and 27 assists for the night. The Eagles swept the Wolverines by winning the third game, 25-9. The Eagles will face a tough Frisco High on Tuesday night in the Eagles' Nest. The Raccoons are 9-2 in district, both their losses being to Frisco Centennial. The homecoming football game would start off with the announcement and crowning of the 2013 homecoming king and queen. Congratulations again to Tom Blaney and Lydia Nussbaum. Not having won a game in district, the Prosper Eagles would have high hopes for the game against the undefeated Colony. The Eagles would come out strong, forcing the first Colony possession to a fumble, but could not get on the board. The Colony would outscore the Eagles in the first quarter by 7 points. Marquez Houston led the Eagle offense with 177 yards rushing and 3 touchdowns. The team as a whole would run for 293 yards in the night. Chris Jackson would receive for 15 yards, and Riley Davis would follow him with 13 receiving yards. Sophomore Jay Bias would command the defense with 16 total tackles. Junior Grayson Barrett and senior Tyler Webb would follow with 12. Webb also had one interception. The Eagles would go into the half down by seven, looking to come out with something to prove. In the second half, the Eagles would put up 14 points to the Colony 7. Neither team would score in the fourth quarter, making the final score 21-28. With the Eagles on a five-game losing streak, they will come out this Friday night looking for a change when they take on Little Elm. Little Elm is coming off a loss to Frisco Heritage. They are also winless in district this season. With the volleyball team likely to finish in one of the top three spots in district, Jack Parker assesses the team's stats and how the rest of the season looks for the Lady Eagles. Coming out of a win on Tuesday, the volleyball team currently sits in third place in district. This win against Wakeland has increased their record to 8-2 in district and 25-9 overall. MaxPreps.com has ranked the Eagles 40th in the state. Before going into the Wakeland game, the Eagles averaged 6.8 kills per set, 16 blocks, and 4 aces a game. Kaylee Cole leads the team with 57 overall digs, and Meredith Bramer leads the team with 23 kills a game. With their next hardest game being against Frisco High, the Eagles put themselves in a good position to go far in the playoffs. Reporting for the point after, I'm Jack Parker. One of Prosper's most physical and mental sport that commonly goes unnoticed is boys and girls cross country. Here to clarify the sport and all it has to offer is senior Ryan Cleary. Ryan, welcome to the show. Thanks yeah, for thanks, coming on. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So um, just tell me exactly what happens in a normal cross country meet. Um, well, we normally leave the school at about 6 a.m. And once we get there, we have about an hour before the race to warm up. So when we start getting ready, uh, we make our way to the line and then the starter, he'll get us all ready. He'll tell us we have about five minutes. And then after that, you know, he shoots the gun. We take off. And at the beginning, it's just a big crowd of people. And, you know, if you're not careful, you get spiked in the back of the leg. You start bleeding. But um, after that, it thins out. And, you know, you kind of see uh, where everybody's falling into place. 
And then we run 3.12 miles is the length of the race. And you try to hold the same pace for most of the race. And then that last mile you start pushing and then the last, you know, 100 or 200, um, that's called the kick and that's where you really start sprinting, if that's what you want to call it. <laughs> so how do you guys prepare for a meet? Um, to prepare, I mean, we obviously have practices. You have to get enough rest, enough water. Those are the two big things that people don't really realize that make a huge difference, but they do. I mean, getting enough rest and enough water. Why do you guys wake up so early <laughs> to run? Um, well, our meets are always in the morning, really early, so uh, to, be, to prepare for a meet like that, you have to prepare like that in practice, too. So, What are you most passionate about in cross country? Um, in cross country, I'm probably most passionate about how everybody's so mental, mentally tough and how everybody just has this mindset of it's going to hurt, you're prepared, but you know if you just push, you can get through it. Perfect. All right. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, thank you. Good luck in the rest of your season. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. We end the show today with Marquez Houston's top three plays of Friday night's game against the Colony. Q scored all three touchdowns for the Eagles on the night. The first touchdown was scored by a handoff from Chase Dawkins, who had walked through the Colony defense for the score. On this drive, Houston would find the hole in the defense to walk in his second touchdown. And on the third and final point of the night, Houston would run for over 50 yards, breaking this huge tackle, and then running all the way down the field, just barely hitting the goal marker as he reached the end zone for Crossfire's final score of the night. With that, I'm Elise Parker, and the point after is good.